So my role is I am the technical rap specialist for Arlon Graphics, um, and my I cover Australia and New Zealand. So it's a it's a bit of a big area to cover, but I my role is pretty much just travelling around. Well, normally travelling around and running training. I've only been with Arlon now for coming up to eight months, I guess seven or eight months. But before that, I was in the industry rapping um, for about fifteen years. So I've come from from the, from the industry, um, kind of stepping off, off the tools a little bit and um, moving more into a training space now. So, um, and I am from uh, New Zealand originally, so uh, just so you know, I'm, I might be a, a defector, but I am a Kiwi at heart, so I'm from Dunedin originally. So, I'm um, looking forward to when I can next come over and actually meet you guys, see you guys face to face. I'm hoping I've met some of you before, um, I was over at the NZSDA, uh, a couple of years back, and so I might have might have met some of you guys before. So I'm going to um, cover a few things now. I'm going to start talking about uh, SLX. <clears throat> I'm just going to run over quickly our flight technology, our adhesive system. Please, though, like Steve said, uh, jump in with questions because if if you guys all want to know about something in particular, I'd rather uh, direct things to to what you guys really want to know about. Um, so I'm gonna start with SLX. I don't know how many of you have used our products before or are familiar with our flight technology. The, the main thing that we get people saying with, with our flight technology, and that's the adhesive on our premium wrap films. So that's on our SLX, our Illuminite, and on our, we've got another piece here, on our Fusion Wrap, which is our um, high performance polymeric. So that's a calendared wrap film, but that is excellent. It will outperform every other calendared uh, printable wrap film. Um, the adhesive, the difference with the adhesive is that it's a topography based adhesive as opposed to an inhibitor base. So if you guys are used to using 1105 or um, 180C, uh, 1080, sorry, 180C um, products, they have inhibitors in their adhesive system, which is basically microscopic little beads, polymer beads or glass beads that create a little barrier. So I'll just quickly, so if you guys can see my second camera here. Um, so if this is the, hopefully you can see this. I'm just gonna zoom in a touch here. Yep, all looks good, mate. That's all, look, all looks good. So this is the, <clears throat> this is the sub, that's the vinyl there. And this is the substrate or the body of the car. Um, inhibitor based will have a layer of glue and then it will have these little, uh, this is obviously extremely zoomed in, these little beads that prevent it from grabbing instantly. Obviously it doesn't, you know, if it's hot, it's still gonna grab. But when you then press down and heat, the glue sort of molds around those inhibitors and you'll get your, your full contact. The thing with that, I don't know if you, any of you have ever seen uh, a we call it sanding, which is a little problem where you can actually see these little dots. It's, it happens when you, if you've ever had to drag the film or move it over a high point, you, you might notice dots on the high point or on like a, a ridge line of a bonnet or something. That's the inhibitors sort of rolling, rolling out of place. And then they don't have a little a groove to go into where they were originally set in the adhesive. So then they'll actually look like a little bit of sand or a bit of dust. So our adhesive um, doesn't do that. It's impossible for that to happen. We use an, 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 uh, a topography-based adhesive, which is basically peaks and valleys. So if you think of like mountain ranges, um, the, the high points, or well in this case, the low points, this is a substrate down here. The actual point of contact when you first lay the vinyl on is very, very small. And this topography, this texture is achieved by the pattern in the, um, in the liner. So we use our own special liner that creates this, this texture. So initially, if you were to peel the backing and touch it with your thumb or finger, you'll, you'll feel like it's not very sticky. Um, and that puts, that puts some people off. The thing you've got to remember is that your fingerprint has also got topography on it. So your actual, the contact area between your fingerprint and these peaks and valleys is even lower than it is on a, on a car. But what happens is when you start applying pressure, 
you push down, you squash down the glue, and then, so this is now no longer, and now the contact area sort of doubles. You've still got those channels though, those little gaps where there's no um, adhesive, but so that still allows for great air release. And then eventually, I'll, I'll actually draw another one because it's going to get messy. As you go along, you're going to get, you know, this is a few hours later, you're going to have mostly coverage, mostly adhesion, still a few air channels. And then once it fully wets out, which is when the glue completely settles out, because all glues are essentially a, a liquid, a very, very thick liquid, it will completely bond and will, there's no inhibitors in there at all. So you've actually got a better contact area than you do with an inhibitor based uh, product. So the thing that I, I try to remind people is that it's not low tack, it's low initial tack. So whereas with a, if this is, um, this is my little scientific graph here, this is adhesion level and this is time. Your, your 3Ms, especially 3M because that grabs a lot quicker, but your high tack products are gonna shoot up like this and reach sort of their maximum adhesion pretty quickly. And then from that point, they're just, that's it, they're stuck on. Our products generally will just do, they'll still get to the same point, but slower. So if anybody's worried about um, the tack level, you just have to know to work with it. It just gives you longer to work with. This also means that you don't get adhesive lines. If you lay a panel down and you have to, to peel it back up, uh, if you find a hair in it or a bit of dust you've got to get out, you're not going to get a dirty big damaged glue line where you've pulled it up as long as you do it within the first few hours of installing. So it's super forgiving <clears throat> in that way. It is, <clears throat> it is worth noting that you probably, I wouldn't recommend people to do a full wrap or a, or a large partial wrap and send it out the same day. I like to, I think it's good practice wherever possible to, to hold on to wraps overnight, um, let the glue fully bond, gives you time to check over it in the morning, gives you time to do overtime that night. If you stuff up a print, you need to redo it. You know, there's nothing worse than um, knowing that the client's coming at four o'clock or, you know, you, you just have to push to get it done. Um, it allows you more time for post heating, make sure it's all heated properly. So SLX or flight technology, not low in, not low tack, but just low initial tack. So once you know, once you kind of know that and know that it will wet out and get a full bond, uh, it becomes a really, really good product to use. Um, I've got this piece here that I've stuck down, which I'm just, I'm hoping this is gonna show up in the camera. So this is a little piece that I had half on and half off the, um, the, this panel here that I've got. And if you can see, I'm hoping that, this will show up. There's a real matte, this bit was still had the backing on it. So this has a real matte um, finish to it. And that's those little peaks and valleys, the texture, right? This bit here, I'm hoping that shows a bit more reflection. That's been on there for a little while and I've heated it. Steve, let me know if that's, if you're kind of catching any of that, but there should be a bit of a shine or sheen difference between the two there. Basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little hard to pick up. It's a little hard to see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens is once it's, this is, this side's already started to wet out. So it's, it's, it's easily 50% shinier than the other side. So once you've stuck SLX on, left it, then you peel it off. Eventually the glue is going to look completely shiny and then it will be extremely sticky to touch and it'll feel a lot more like the products that you, the other products that you're more used to. So that's sort of, the background of flight, um, it, it makes, it's actually changed the way that I install as well. It, it means that you can lay a full bonnet on with, you know, just on your own, drape it on. Oh, someone said they can see the difference. That's great, thank you. Um, you know, you can do full vans on your own. Um, things that I would have never have attempted. I used to be a 3M, only installer like i was just diehard 3m um and uh, you know i'm not here I, i'm not here to like say anything bad about the other products they're all just different right so there's pros and cons to everything um and if that's your preferred product well that's great i, I would never try to talk somebody out of something that they actually like but for anybody that um 
find some of those products a bit aggressive, like they grab a bit quickly or they're a bit hard to pop back up, highly recommend trying, trying our SLX. Um, yeah, really great product to wrap with. It's basically, yeah, especially if you're going out on site, if you've got to go and do an install at someone's place and otherwise it's a one man job, but you kind of have to send your extra staff member just to be that second set of hands for the big panels. Well, SLX, you can avoid that with, a, with enough magnets. You can get the whole backing off on the side of a van. It won't grab straight away. You've got enough time to set it all, get it all in place and, and then just go for it. I, um, we just had a question from uh, Jake. He's just asking, um, you know, yes. does it have good air release? So I know you've Amazing. covered a bit about that then. So in chance we can go into a little bit of detail briefly um, just around the air release on SLX. Air release, yeah, I will. So it's actually got, it's got one of the best air releases of any uh, product I've ever worked with. I'll see if I can zoom in here and see. The cool thing about the air release as well is that it lasts for so long. Like you've got hours of working time. Now, can you guys see this here? Does that bubble show up all right? Yep. I mean, obviously that's just, I'll just bring my screen up here. Is that in focus? No, it's just been out of focus. Maybe give it a... I don't know what's going on there. That's a bit better. So the air release, like you've really got to try to get bubbles. You've really got to force it. And they just push out so quickly, even when you get creases. So I'll be really rough with this. I don't know if you could see that first crease that I got there. You can still see it just in the vinyl. There, where's my squeegee? Not only is it it got amazing air release, but it doesn't mark. Like you can get a pretty gnarly crease and with a bit of heat, and I can even just use the heat of my fingertip. Like it's completely, you can't see it at all. So not only does it have great air release, but it's got incredibly good sort of uh, healability. The cool thing is it doesn't have any designated channels that go any particular way. It does have a grid in it as well as the topography, but because it's got the texture, it just allows it to go out in any, any direction. And I know like your, one, uh, your 1105 also has, has very good air release, but this stuff is just, I think it's just great. So you'll always be able to, push air out. And the other cool thing is if for any reason, say you've left it on for a few hours or you've already heated it and those channels do collapse, well, it's so good at coming back up. So a lot of products, if you've applied this and that's sat there for sort of, I don't know, even five, 10 minutes like that, or you know, you've, you've laid it down and then you need to, you realize you've got a hair in it or whatever, and you try to pull it back up, you'll often see there'll be a kind of a permanent line left at that point where you've pulled it up. Um, this stuff, because the glue hasn't reached its full bond yet, you've still got working time. So you'll never get a glue line. As long, I mean, I say never, you'll never get a glue line as long as you deal with it, you know, within a reasonable time. If you leave it overnight, it's gonna wet out. And then yes, you're gonna see a glue line. So the two main positives are the best, advantages that, that I noticed were no glue lines and no sanding or dots. We just used to call it dots, but in the States they call it sanding. Just looks like someone's literally thrown a handful of sand under the film. Um, the other thing is if you guys have ever wrapped into say deep, like around a front bumper bar, you've got like the, the driving lights or in, in the in around spotlights or something, you've got to just like kind of thumb it in to get it into a, a recess. And every time you go with your glove or with your thumb, it'll sort of leave a bit of a glue mark because it's always pulling back. And that's basically the glue's grabbing. And then the tension of the vinyl is just creeping it back so quickly that by the time you do your next thumb stroke, that glue's already damaged 
and you basically telegraph you'll just like show this line of where you've been it's like this just maps exactly the strokes that you've done and it used to drive us crazy um we couldn't find a way to avoid it and we'd use you know two we'd have two guys we'd have someone with a heat gun someone with a glove we'd be trying to trying to get the stuff in this is obviously with a competitor's product um that doesn't happen with with flight technology it just uh tide mark yeah perfect um so you don't get that the only way you would ever get that with this is say if you wrapped the bar and didn't wrap any of the recesses then you came back after lunch or a few hours later then you decided to do the deep parts you may then get a glue line where you'd left it but i mean nobody nobody does that so as long as you wrap within the within the first few hours of or finish your wrap within the first few hours of starting it you'll be fine you never get glue lines so that's the major it's probably the my favorite perk um, compared to the others so yeah the, the it, i can't say enough about the air release it's really really good the other thing is the um you can hear that as well so people that worry you know if anybody touches it with their thumb or finger and thinks it doesn't stick all you got to do is here i haven't even used heat on this you know if it's making that noise after a couple of minutes you know it's gonna it's grabbing it's great mm. um before we wrap up just the slx kind of overview does anyone have any questions or uh or follow up around that that product this is certainly not uh we're not trying to hard sell um no SLX or anything it's just giving everyone <laughs> an idea of uh what why he's wrapping with um you know going forward in, the, in this in this little meeting but um yeah so if you've got anything please just sing out uh otherwise the things that we're looking at covering today is um you know applying in the cold has been a big um question that we've, we've been getting over the last couple of years especially with with slx in particular so there's a good chance yeah. to cover that uh just heat and tension in general so just the best practices and then overall some just um top you know advanced wrap tips that uh these guys and girls can get back to next week you know when, yep. we, when we all get back on tuesday awesome news um that we can get that there and save everyone a little bit of time and a little bit of money so i just see um so i just got blair has got a great question what's your opinion using this product with adhesion promoter i.e primer that's a good that's a great uh question um i used to use a bit of adhesion promoter where where it was sort of necessary um, I, I don't like to use it, but I know sometimes it is, um, it is sort of necessary. You can definitely use it. There's nothing that, uh, there's no, there's no clash between the adhesive. It will work fine. Uh, the only thing to, to consider is just the removal of it. Obviously it's a bit of a pain to, if you're the one that has to strip that job back off, but absolutely fine. If you want to use a primer, go for it. The only thing I'd say is just outgas the primer properly. If you can prime it and then walk away, have morning tea, have lunch, even buzz it with a heat gun. Um, the one mistake I see people doing is chuck the primer on, it goes touch dry, and so they start wrapping and it's just a bit soon, there's still uh, solvent, still evaporating out of the primer, so it can affect the glue if you do that. Okay. But yeah, go for it. If that's your preferred method, by all means. And uh, Mark's got a question. He's been using SLX for a while now and he's noticed that mixing a finished print with a solid colored panels with white background and text that there is a difference rates and with the print da, 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 da. Uh, it sticks faster on solid colored areas it takes longer to apply than white areas where no color slash ink is does that make sense Do I really yeah know? that makes sense okay uh what if mark you're there what printer what are you, is that solvent um because there is definitely um even even with latex ultimately when ink is going on to the to the vinyl it changes it whether it's i mean solvent a lot more eco solvent much more but um even with latex there's the heat involved it, it's roland okay eco yeah so anything you're pouring solvent is in the ink that's getting laid down um i would highly recommend our our stance on outgassing is 48 hours with eco solvent and i know that is inhibitive to some people if you're if you've got a job you know you've got to get the job out waiting two days you might not have even been able to finish the design until the car rocked up that's that's where you know i see sign shops running multiple printers they use latex for the fast turnaround jobs but roland is generally the preferred oh you've left for at least two days 
well, that's great. I mean, you've done the right thing then. The only thing I'd say is make sure that it's, everybody uncoils it differently, or I don't know if you if you can guarantee that there's um, airflow to the entire print, but it sounds like you've done everything right. Solvent just does change it slightly. So um, yeah, it, it, some people actually prefer it once it's been pr uh, printed with a solvent, because it actually it, it, it obtains a higher grab. So it becomes a bit more like the other products that they're used to. So I can't really explain the science behind that, but yeah, it's always going to change. And it, it, some of it does go through to the adhesive and soften it. Shouldn't cause any other problems though. If it's definitely outgassed, then you should be fine. Yeah, it's just and a bit like, annoying. And what we can do is uh, the next trip, once this is all over and we can get Callum over to New Zealand, we can uh, organize a bit of a catch up anyway, maybe and, Absolutely. and, and help iron out any of these yeah. issues with it too. And I prefer, sol I prefer Eco Solvent as well. Uh, yeah. I find the colours are better. If you've got the time to work with it and our gas it, that's my preferred. And uh, Uma, you've, you've asked around stretching corners. We will we'll definitely be covering that um, with some live wrapping shortly. So yep. we'll, yeah, we'll I'll wait. I'll do that a bit later on and I'll move the camera around and I'll get onto some of these Great. pointy bits on the, on the guard here. Cool. Well, I think that's all the questions covering from SLX. But yeah, again, feel free to sing out. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. Okay. So cold weather. Um, now, this is a tricky one. I can't really demonstrate anything with, with cold weather, but I can just, just talk a bit about it. That is a, that is a big challenge that we have. And um, because of the low initial tack um, and the fact that the glue needs to wet out, um, heat speeds up the wetting out process. So if there is no heat, if, if it's a cold day, cold environment, cold panel, the glue is going to stay in its original shape for longer, which is going to, those peaks and valleys are just, the peaks are going to stay as peaks. They're not going to collapse as quickly. Um, so we do get people saying it's, it doesn't stick in the cold. And yes, that's, that's hundred percent right. Um, it's a tricky one because obviously in an ideal world, you're going to have, you would be working within t a temperature range. So usually when products, when our SLX is getting used in the cold and it's not sticking, well, that's usually also outside of the recommended temperature range of your 3Ms and your Avery's. But because 3M grabs a lot better initially, it doesn't give people those problems. So they say, oh, 3M does stick in the cold and SLX doesn't. And yes, there's no arguing about that. The only thing I'd say is if you can work with it, um, preheating your panels, if you're doing a van, so I know this isn't always a possibility, but if you're doing a cargo van with no, nothing in the back, we used to always just chuck two or three heat guns in, in the back facing up. As soon as you walk in in the morning, chuck them on, leave the doors ajar and just crank them on full and then go make your coffee and get, get your job all set up. That warm air inside the van can make a world of difference to wrapping on the outside. You may not even notice the difference to the touch, but couple degrees can make a massive difference. Recommended ap application temperature. I don't want to quote. <laughs> you saw it. Right. I saw that. Yeah. I don't want to quote you guys the wrong number. Um, I think, I think we'd say above 16 degrees um, and anywhere like low, I mean, obviously low twenties is just perfect, but um, once you're getting down below, below 15, it's sort of, but there's nothing wrong with working in those conditions if you're sort of counteracting it. So if, you, if you're lucky enough to have infrared heaters, uh, you know, even here in Melbourne, it gets cold in winter, um, not bottom of the South Island cold, but um, we would run a gas, a gas heater in the factory first thing in the morning and just take, take the edge off. Adding a couple of degrees makes a big difference. Um, ultimately, if you don't have that uh, option available to you, if you can't, heat your factory, if you can't preheat the panel, then I understand it, it maybe, maybe it's not the product. It's, if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. So I think if you can, if you can work with it and, and find those ways to, to get some heat in, it's amazing. And we do see that the sales are far better in the warmer regions. Um, and it does perform extremely well in the hotter climates because when your other products start to go to bubble gum and just grab on, um, ours still allows for, for that repositionability. But super cold conditions, it's tough. 
I mean, even if you do a wrap with 3M and you tell them it's, you did it in, on a three degree morning, technically they're not going to want to warranty that if anything happens. So even though you might get it on fine, it's not really recommended for any product to be used that cold. So, but I know we can't, you, know, you can't have everybody having a temperature control factory. It's not, not practical. It costs a, costs a lot of money to heat every single factory. So I hope that helps um, sort of explain a bit of the cold weather stuff. Um, Steve, what were we, what was the next, if, if there's any other questions about cold, cold conditions or um, anybody has anything they want to add about that? I don't know where you guys are all spread out. Is the majority of people, your customers, Auckland or is this sort of around New Zealand? No, all around New Zealand, mate. We get, yeah, uh, yeah we, we deal with everyone across the country, which is great. Um, yeah, I reckon... So if there's no more questions around um, applying in the cold, which I know I understand it's, it is hard to um, answer live. Hang on, we've got... Oh, yeah. Um, Can you heat, the, heat up the panel? Do you, want me, do, you want, do you want to be reading these out, Steve? I'm sort of beating you to the... No, no. Go for it, mate. You're seeing, right. seeing them come in there. Yes, you definitely can. Yeah, you can heat up the specific panel. Absolutely. So that is something that we used to do. If there was a recess um, that we knew it was a cold morning and we had to do a... a, a they call them false windows in the States. I don't know what, you know, on the vans where the, sometimes there's a window, those deep recesses. I would actually just sit there and just blast the recess on hot for a couple of minutes, then go away, get my panel ready, get it all set up. So it's cooled down. It's not going to melt the vinyl, but it's, it's, you know, mild to the touch by that point. And that makes a huge difference. Um, you can, if you've got a trolley, set up a couple of heat guns a meter back, point them at the, at the van. Definitely. Preheating specific panels is a great idea, especially on your edges or anywhere that it's got a, um, a recess or it's got a wrap in, definitely. Cool. Yeah, well, on, on heat then, that, that a common topic that comes up is just general you know, heat and tension and getting those, um, those characteristics right. Um, yeah. So if you're able to take us through some of that, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, so heat and tension. So I'll, um, I'll pull this, I'm going to move this camera back a bit. And Mark will definitely be covering post heating as well. Don't worry. Yeah, post heating. Post heating ninety plus degrees, and um, I, I definitely recommend to thumb down all edges. I just think that's a good practice to do, and I do that with every film anyway. But I, you know, just use your glove and just press down on every edge. It just helps seal, collapse the last of those air channels. The last thing you want is for it to go out to the client without fully wetting out, and this can happen with any product. And you know they go to wash it, or there's a little bit of something gets under that edge. Um, so I'll thumb every edge that I've wrapped, as w and just warm that. So that I don't always get the edges to 90, but I'll just warm them, thumb them down, and of course recesses to 90 plus degrees. So I'll just show you a little bit um, on this panel. I'll just get a, get myself a piece of sorry, I'll get, get a piece of SLX. Okay, so this, I hope that graphic isn't, a, isn't too uh, hectic for you to sort of make out what's going on. But I'm just going to rip the backing off. I don't know if any of you guys caught, I did a Facebook live video with, on the Arlon site um, a couple of weeks back. And I'm actually doing another one, which is going to be on Tuesday morning, uh, 10 a.m. So midday for you guys on Facebook, on Arlon, Arlon's Facebook page. But I've covered a little bit about... Um, pre-tensioning, I don't know if that's going to help or not, um, laying vinyl across a high point such as this. Now I'm actually going to just bring this camera up. This goes back to what I was saying before, that it's changed the way that I can wrap. So say if this, I was doing this guard, just assume it's a full panel here, but this is the area I'm focusing on. If this was another product, I would not really want to be laying it on and sliding it around and tacking it and re-tacking it because it's going to be grabbing. And if I was to start laying it and then go, oh no, hang on, I want to move it, I'd risk getting these glue lines. The flight technology allows me to tack it and even apply it because I know I'm not going to get a glue line. 
Well, actually, first I'll show you what would happen if I just started laying it. So if I was just to hit all the, the flat bit first, I guess the easy bit, I call it, you would, um, yeah, I got a little crease there because I rushed that and it's just completely gone. If I was to just get all this basic part down and then go, okay, now I've got to get up over this part. See if I can get a bit of light on here. Now, can you guys see if I start to then try to wrap this over that line, which is not super aggressive, but you can see I'm starting to get, I mean, we used to call that fingering or the states, they call it bottle capping when it gets these wrinkles in it. And that's basically build up, right? So that's the opposite of stretch because there's more vinyl there than we want and it's trying to compress. And that's when, that's showing up there, that's when that will turn into a crease. Yeah, you can see that up there. So pre-tensioning, I'm going to just lift this up and leave that cut down. And I can do this over and over again with this product. I'm just going to pull on it a little bit. Zoom back out so you can see the whole frame. Just pulled on that a little bit, no heat yet. And I'm going to lay that part down. I'm going to lift this part up. And pull on this. And that wasn't that much, right? And there's no heat involved yet. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm not yet finished, so I'm gonna get more stretch on it with a bit of heat. But already, I can get quite a bit further just with a little bit of tension. I've not got, you know, I'm probably about the same distance, but it's nowhere near as aggressive and I could probably work that out now if I wanted to. And then I'll do it a third time and just add a touch of heat to it. But this is not, I don't consider this stretch as such. I kind of just consider this tension really. So I'm just gonna warm the panel. And the cool thing about the flight technology is that even if it's stuck in the middle, I can just pull straight down and it just pops that little bit that's stuck straight off. So now I'm gonna apply this side to anchor it. I'm gonna pop this up. Warm it. Pull on it and anchor it there. Turn this off. The flat part or the easy part that I did before is still nice and flat and nice and easy. But this part here, just with that little bit of tension, has hugged this top area. And now when I go to apply this, I can get that all the way to the back there. See, now, see if you can see this. I've got a little crease line there. I don't know if that's showing up, but I can just basically pull that towards myself and it's completely gone. So I'm sending that build up left and right. I'm taking it away from that middle part. And then I hope you can see that's pretty smooth there. So the bottle capping or the build up is, is like virtually non-existent. And that, that technique of just pulling left and right across a ridge line like that is how I wrap every single panel I do now. So anything where it's got a, we 
kind of hug a corner or pull that way. So a lot of people I see will just apply the normal bit, the flat bit, and then they'll bust out the heat gun and pull this and stretch it up and out. And yes, you can get the film down that way, but I much prefer giving it a little bit of pre-stretch, I guess a little bit of pre-tension really. I don't like to call it stretch because it is barely stretching. And then if there is the slightest little bit left, you can very easily just warm that, relax it. Hey Callum, Lisa's asked, so with this, could you lay it with some tack? Uh, sorry. So with this, could you lay it, tack some spots and then use heat to settle it in, kind of mold it? Does that make sense? Yes, exactly. yep. yes you can. So that's a great question. So what I, what I generally do with a panel like this or with any panel now is I, I get the whole thing tacked on. Basically, um, I'll sit there and work left to right, tacking. I don't even have the squeegee out yet. I'll just grab it, tack it to one side, thumb that down, walk to the other side, tack it, stretch it, heat it, and get the whole thing looking like glass. And ideally, it, the, the panel should really be like 80% wrapped before you even pull out the squeegee. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I know what, what she means by that. I do do that a lot. I tack it and then I'll bust out the heat. That becomes to relax it really. If you get that tension in ahead of time, then you've kind of given the vinyl place for that build up to go so that when you do relax the film, it can then absorb and settle out. You, you know, you guys see what happens when you, when you warm film. Um, so rather, I'd almost never put a panel on and just start squeegeeing straight away. I'll often take a couple of minutes and people might look at that and go, well, you, what are you mucking around for? You know, they might start squeegeeing and they've already got half of it on, but I almost guarantee if they've done that, they're going to add time on later when it comes to getting those corners down or those edges down. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. So... The other thing, the other thing I do with tensioning and heat is that I will basically worry about my corners before I've applied as well. So if I'm going to get to this corner up here, I'll just take the top. Say if I'm if I know that I'm going to get to this corner up here before I've even applied. So I'll do that exact same thing that I just did before. I'll anchor it down over on this side. You can't see that. I'll anchor it over here. And then I'll pull it towards this corner. To get, my, get my tension. And then I'll actually find the corner, which is right there. Then I'll pop this up. Now this is sort of comes to the question about stretching corners. So I can apply some of this just to anchor it. I may end up popping this all back up, but I can, I'll hold the film, I'll try to find that corner with my thumb and I'll sort of hold it, my thumb in place. Then I'll pop it back a good, I know my arm's sort of getting in the way there. I'll pop it back a good 100 mil and I'll heat it well away from the corner. So I'll try to keep the heat 50 mil away. Now I'm gonna, Pull it to the corner. Now I haven't really stretched that very much. I've just tensioned it and the heat's just allowed it to grow a little bit. But none of this has been applied yet, right? Now, I don't know if you guys can see, maybe this, maybe the laptop will pick this angle up. Right there on that corner. I haven't even started wrapping that properly yet. And it is already, for me doing nothing else other than just tensioning it, you can see it's already just starting to hug that corner. Where is it? Yeah, there. So I'm gonna do it again now. So this is the cool thing about the flight is that you can, here we go. You can have multiple cracks at this. So if you're not happy the first time, you just pop it up, rewarm it and do it again. But I'll, I'll assume I'm happy with this. So I'm going to apply up to about 100 mil away from it. 
But again, if I apply too far, I can always just pop it up. So now I'm going to bring it back again and add a bit more heat. Now, I know I'm zoomed in here, so open with you. So there's the corner. So I'm just going to fold it back and add a bit of heat. But because my thumb is on the corner, the heat isn't going right into that spot. I'm kind of protecting it from the heat. So now I pull it again. And I'm sort of digging my thumb in there intentionally. And it gains a little bit of heat from my thumb as well. A little bit of warmth. So now I'm going to apply all the way up to that. And I really haven't been aggressive with the heat at all. That was on a low setting and on a low fan. And you can see now that corner without any more heat has really wants to sort of hug, hug onto that. So now this is that, I guess you call that the pre-stretch stage. I'm gonna add a bit of heat now to it and let everything relax around it. And I'm gonna sort of support it as I go. Same on the other side. And I'm sort of gonna pull it from left to right and back on itself. And that is actually, even though I can't really see what I'm doing at this angle, I've got that. Is that showing up all right? Yeah, it looks great, mate. Hey, um, yeah, so what are the chances of doing it with the headlights still in? We've been asked from Sam. With the headlights still in, yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, it get, obviously it gets a lot harder. So I, I understand like these are sort of unfair examples because you'd never have a guard off a car. But with the headlight in, I would still use the same technique, 100%. Like I will still do all that prep work. I'll still work with my thumb and I'll sort of, you know, I saw that I had my thumb hooked in and when I was pulling, it made sure that that point that my, where my thumb was then ended up after the, after the panel. So that any sort of, any of that stretch that got put in too aggressively goes past the corner. Then when you shrink it back, that film then comes back and hugs around. Um, you just don't have the ability to do this part with the headlight in, but you still do all the prep work. Then what I do is say if this was up here and it had the headlight in, I would release so I'm blocking the camera there. I would release this in a V around the point and you sort of, you know, the headlight's going to be there, but you sort of pull it and like using the tension left and right, you pull it and like flop it down and then you can sort of, you do have a bit of ability to pull it back on itself. Um, you just got to sort of work, <laughs> work around it. It is tricky, and that's when I'll bust out a tool like, um, like my, uh, my yellow tools, sort of tucking tool. You guys might use the Avery red or blue tools. They're all great for this sort of stuff with a little point like that, or it's got this cool hook on the other end, which allows you to just really get a lot of back pressure under the corner. You can sort of roll it under and really pull on it and rub it around to make sure that that vinyl's really pushed down. So it is doable with the light end. And I find even if you get the film, so the thing that I always try to tell people is if you get, hopefully you can see this, that point right where the, where that shadow starts, if you can get the film just over that corner. So people like to talk about completely wrapping their corners. And I, and I agree, like it's cool if you can get your corners done and people talk about corner game strong and all that on Instagram. The thing is, I don't mind releasing corners at all. And I think as long as you don't have to release it right up onto the top, if you can release it, and it's the difference of about two millimeters, if you can release it just, now I don't know if you guys can see, I have cut that now, but the release is on the side, not the top. So now you can cut it and sort of fold it. You can even do a couple cuts and fold and overlap it. And yes, technically that now has a join, but 
with the headlight in, the jo no, there's no um, evidence of a join on the top and even just on the start of that corner. It's only on the side edge. Um, so for me, that's a still a successful corner. And I recommend doing that for every corner. So I still do pre-stretch on my fleet jobs, but I don't go all out. So I'll just do a little bit of pre-stretch. I'll give you an example. Sorry, can no, just a couple of things while, yeah. while you're doing that. Um, yeah, Mark and Sam, we have a, a similar tool called a Sunny Tucker. Um, but let me just make sure, I'll just check to Callum after this and make sure it's the, they're the same thing. They look very similar, but um, but you know what it's like. There's, there's a million different kinds. There and, are. And like, I, I yeah. recommend people use whatever works for you. I mean, Arlon has a, we have a strong affiliation with, with Yellow Tools. So that's, the, the, those are the brands that, that's the stuff that I use. But I know there's some really cool products out there. Um, right. And then Colin's just popped up a link in the chat for um, those Sunny Tuckers to our website. And, oh, great. And uh, Hunter had a question. So if you're doing, say, a whole side of a vehicle with mostly flat surface, mostly flat surface area, yep. then the wheel guards and more intricate curves and edges, do you start applying the guard first and then work to the easy flat area? Or would you apply Say that again. So if you're doing guards with edges, do you do the edges first? Yeah. Yes, I do. So I do all the hard parts first, if that makes sense. So if, if this... If I was doing this guard, I would have tackled that corner that way before applying any of this bit. Let's just say this is the, the same solid piece. I would be going to this corner and doing a little bit of stretch and you can do it cold. So if you guys can see, see the corner there, hopefully it's showing up all right. Um, I just basically grab my finger, same way, a little bit of stretch, pull it round and hug it and just tack that now that's it's all, almost gone all the way that was just with a bit of warmth from my thumb but i won't hit, lay any of that so then i'll come down to this corner and i'll do the same i'll pull that and hug that but won't lay that bit then i'll tack it get this corner pull it that way get that i'll get all the edges just thumbed and so that the panel is basically you know it's pretty much on by the time you actually start applying. And it means when you get to your corners, they've all had the, the pre-stretch put in. So then it's just a waft of heat and it shrinks back. And I'm not talking, there was no heat, so that's not an aggressive pre-stretch. It will just relax. It'll be hugged enough to go over the edge, the start of the curve, and then you'll do your little nick, do a fold behind. So you've got the safety of a, of a released corner of a joined, you know, um, of, of, a, of a folded overlap there, but you've got the look of a pre-stretched corner. So yeah, every single corner, I'll tack it, pull every edge, get every corner. And I do that with fleet stuff as well. I know a lot of these techniques are sort of overkill for your, your in and out in the same day signage, but I still use these techniques on even the most basic jobs because it doesn't take any longer just to quickly pull the corner into place and tack it, pull the corner into place. I find it's faster because then when you get to the corner, you're not adding stretch right at the very end. You know, if you lay the flat panel and don't think about that corner until it comes time to finish it, then you have to put all the stretch and do all the work right there. And, and that's where you see failures and corners popping. If you grab it and pull on it, you've taken some of the film Give, has lent itself from out over here. And that tension of pulling it to get to the corner allows the rest of it to hug and go like glass. And then you kind of not even, if you can get the panel looking like glass, well then the squeegee work is really just, you're just pushing out air. You're not really having to wrap too much. You're not having to tell the vinyl where to go. You, it's just a, almost a formality of just pushing it on because it's already in place. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Hope that answered the question about um, starting with edges. That's pretty much, let me know if you want, want to see more on that. That's pretty much how I attack every, every panel. Same as if it's a bonnet, um, I'll pull it and tack all corners of the bonnet first, provided that you can. Some of the Mercedes bonnets that have got the big ridge lines, 
you have to tackle them first, obviously. But then I'll just finish the ridge, just get to the other side of it, then pull it and tack it, get it like glass, get my corners. Hey, um, I can't yes. remember, actually. I think you were a bit modest at the start and not actually um, tell everyone what, you, what you've been doing for the last few years and when, what kind of competitions you were part of winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, may have, you may have left out a couple of bits, but just, just so you know, everyone's aware, like, this guy, he's, he's the real deal. And, um, Thanks, Steve. <laughs> and, and was, you know, I don't know what the technical term was, but, you know, team leader, really rapper at uh, a company over in Australia called Exotic Graphics, who won um, a good couple of years in a row of Avery's Rap Like a King. So I don't know if you have any of the images up or, or really that you I can do. Is this the moment that I do, do, do a little shameless, yeah, shameless yeah. pitch? Yeah. All right, let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll flick through a couple of the photos. So um, for anybody that doesn't know about exotic graphics. If you don't, highly recommend that you follow them on Instagram. Um, I, I worked there for five years. So this was sort of the, the pinnacle of my rapping career. And it's what led me, made, made it possible for me to get this job now. Because if I hadn't worked at Exotic, I wouldn't have been able to work on such cool projects. These guys have a sort of a passion. The owner, Nick, and his brother, Adrian, they've got a a drive that I've never seen in anyone else in the industry. So this, you might have recognized this car, hopefully. Um, this won us the first Rap Like a King um, competition, and this was completely templated. So the whole car was was traced and with a, you know, all in wrap film, but then taken off, scanned in. So we had all the edges drawn. So basically we had the entire car um, flattened out so that we could design to every edge. So all those pin lines, all those lines that you can see, everything's printed in, there's no overlays. So that sort of stuff, the each panel was done individually. So there's no cutting and just folding in each edge, every single panel wrapped right the way around. So it's a bit of a challenge to get all that to line up, but it went really well. This is just one of my boss's other cars. He's got quite a few. Um, this, this is the coolest, I put this in here, this is the coolest eye load that I've ever had a chance to work on. Um, took a ridiculously long amount of time. I think it would have been about a $12,000 wrap, but we did it as a, these air ride guys did, uh, did the air suspension and all of Nick's cars. So all these panel before. Um, so, oh, sorry, mate. I just had a good question around um, the, the template process. Yes. Yeah, you know, we could go talk about that and take them through kind of your plan and, and how it all came about. Yeah, absolutely. I can show some of that. I'll, I'll just, there's only a couple more photos. I'll just flip through these. This is the other um, exotic uh, vehicle. Didn't go in a competition, but it is really cool. Um, everything was templated on that as well. All the chrome is wrapped um, with a printed laminate on top of rose gold chrome because we couldn't get the copper color that we wanted. And then the beetle, this hopefully is the one that you guys are familiar with. Um, this is, this is hands down the coolest thing I've ever worked on. Um, Three-dimensional embossed wood effect, everything internal, everything was wrapped. So if you guys haven't had a chance, I highly recommend watching the videos. If you just search um, exotic graphics on, you, on YouTube, both the Beetle and the Hot Rod come up straight away. That actually shows, so in answer to your question, that shows the entire process. We don't hide anything. You can see how we template. We basically wrap the entire panel. I'll kind of, we'll get a bit here. Oops, sorry. Just get, if you can just chat for a second, Steve, or just get a piece of scrap vinyl. Oh, make small talk, eh? I'll re I'll re should I read everyone a story? Um, well, while I've got everyone, yeah, if you've got any questions now, feel free to fire them through kind of what he's covered um, so far. And uh, we will have a couple of deals on SLX that uh, I'll, I'll share at the end, some kind of one-time offers and money back if you're not happy and, and all that jazz, just to help um, everyone getting back into next week. So it's a really good pricing. But I'm, I'm you know, like, like Callum, we're very much aware that when it comes to cast especially, is that price is almost irrelevant. It is very much down to that personal style and, and what you like to use and, and, it, and it works for the shop too. So. But it's kind of one of these things that if you don't know, you don't know. So that's why we thought, well, look, there's a good chance to kind of showcase some of these, the benefits with it. Um, but really it's just, you can use these practices with, with any, any wrapping film. So it's, um, it's all pretty cool. So, and what do you reckon? Should we do um, Arlon Rap Like a King next year? Is that the, <laughs> that name? Oh, 
get it. I'm, I'm hoping to get back. I'm still in re- on really good terms with the with the boys at Exotic, and and they they're only twelve minutes away from my house. So I'm hoping to collaborate with them on a project soon. But obviously, we need to wait for a few things to blow over before that can happen. That's right. Cool. But um, so templating. Um, one thing I want to say about templating is. It, for jobs like the beetle and the and the hot rod, look, those are not viable to do commercially. Like somebody said, oh, you know, can you do that hot rod effect on on my hot rod? It, you know, that would have been that would have been upwards of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars of wrapping time, and that's including the templating, the design. You basically got to wrap it three or four times because you never get the templates right. You end up re-templating. You never get the first wrap part right. You end up tweaking it. It just takes forever. Um, but the templating can have a commercial use, just not as sort of as hectic as what you see on those cars. So if you have a repeat, the part that really comes into, into its own is if you've got a fleet of vehicles, if you know that, say, um, you're going to have 15 Hiluxes to do, and which we did, we had a contract for bow repairs to do over here, which were all the exact same Hilux. And if you can, it was a couple models earlier than the, than the current one. And there was this part on the front bar where it just had to fold up and over too many angles in and around the headlights. So we templated a couple of shapes, templated a few patches. The first few, we were just winging it by hand using knifeless tape. It worked, but it was always fiddly and they never ended up the same. You can never hit that exact same line every time. They always look a bit different. So we thought, well, let's invest the time. We stayed back one night, sure. It does add time at the start. You have to take a couple extra hours, but you template those shapes, template your insert patches in and around the vents, anywhere where vinyl, it's too many curves for it to go. Scan, so what basically the, the technique there, and I'll just sort of show you how I'd do that. Check in the camera. So this is very, very rough here. Um, if you can see on this shot here, the theory is, is basically just take a piece of vinyl, apply it over whatever area. Let's just say for, for any reason we needed to template where that indicator was. And that could be because they wanted a graphic where something, I don't know, something went around the indicator, let's just say for argument's sake. But basically what you do is you grab so it's got to be the same, ideally it's the same film that you're going to wrap with, which does, can make it expensive if you're trying to template full panels with a premium printable wrap film that ends up not even staying on the car. But then I'll use sort of textures, Sharpies, whatever I can, whatever works the best in that instance. So I like Sharpies because I'll actually get the edge of the, the um, felt part to hit right on that highlight. These you can draw in or you can just cut them out. It achieves the same result. But let's just say I'll draw that in. Now, and, and I'll go all the way down to, okay, I'm not gonna quite get to the bottom. But let's just say you would get to the next swage line and you draw that line. You take this off and you scan that in. Now that's, that part can take a while. If you've got a big flatbed scanner, great. We didn't, we only had a A3 scanner. Um, so we had to cut the pieces up. So it, we'd cut it up into the size of A3 pieces and then everywhere where it had to have a, a, a join, we'd draw X's and circles like this. Then we'd have to cut the piece there and we'd number it one of two two of two, and we would chop it all up. Well, we'd lay it onto butcher's paper first so that the adhesive wasn't gonna stick back to anything. Then we'd scan it all in. And then you've got to go through the process of joining that all back up again in Illustrator or whatever software you use. But these markers give you really accurate um, registration of where you've got to be. Use the rotate tool, join one, then rotate the other piece till it lines up. Then you have your shape so then you know, this is how we achieve those pin lines. So say we know that's the edge, that's the curve of our wheel arch. I want a pin line, a cool printed line in my film to fall right there. And from that point on is a fade or gradient out that way. Well, I just use 
you know, use the pen tool, whatever your tracing method is, draw the actual line, and then use that line and either do an outline path or whatever you want to do. You've got that curve, you can move that curve in. You can then use this curve and expand it and create your shape around the indicator and so forth. So you probably wouldn't do this for a one-off job, but if you know you've got repeat work, I highly recommend doing this. Um, another really cool thing, um, sorry, I'm just gonna duck off for five seconds here. So another cool thing, another uh, thing I really like to do is template handles. And this is when you've got repetitive work that's going around door handles, but you don't want to take the door handles out. Um, modern door handles, obviously, everything's getting harder with all the keyless entry and all the wiring and stuff. So I'll, this is just a, a template. Let's see, can you guys see that all right? This is a template around a door handle of my car, actually, actually a Mitsubishi Outlander. And those, that is the, the back part of the handle, the front part, and then there's a release there. Because obviously you have to release it if you're wrapping around a handle. Um, and you might be able to see, I've then, this was the test piece. It didn't work as well as I wanted. So then I drew those extra, if you can see those extra pen lines. I drew that on, that's tracing the exact shape of the handle. Now I put this back into my scanner and scan that in, draw those pen lines, then I offset or outline stroke, oh, offset path, bring it in a couple of mils. Then I can literally send my print through my cutter. Well, I mean, I don't, I can't do that here. I've only got a small pl plotter, but you know, you guys are hopefully printing and cutting. Maybe some of you are lucky enough to have flatbed cutters or like Zuns or Suma flatbeds. That's when things get really efficient. You can lay your prints out. You can have the whole side of a car printed with two of these door handles already cut out. So all you've got to do is measure between the edge of this door handle and the start of the next one. You only need to template one handle, assuming they're all the same. But then you'll get your measurement to the top of the door or the top of the where the window trim is, you'll have your measurement to the bottom of the door so you know exactly the height that it needs to be on the panel. Um, so then you've got the vector, you've got a path of this cut out on file and you put one in the one place, move ahead a meter and a half wherever the other door handle is, put that there. Generally you make it a little bit smaller because you'd rather the vinyl have to stretch. Pre-cut that and then your guys can just whip the backing off Two guys hold it up in place. One guy just quickly goes and taps the bits around the handles and it is in place. Like it is no measurements provided you've already worked out where the bits go. You will absolutely smash those wraps on if you start like that. And every single one will be perfect. And you can wrap handles without pulling your knife out because it just tucks behind. Hey, um, yeah, Brendan's asked, is there anywhere that sells common, you know, for example, high aces templates online for purchase? rather than scanning? Um, no, and the, uh, not that I know of. I think there are people that are, that are doing that. Um, they're charging for it. I know I've seen a couple of people doing it. The problem is I always prefer that whoever does the, generally whoever does the template is the person that's gonna be wrapping it because where you put stretch when you template has to be where you put stretch when you do the final job. Um, if somebody else templates for you and they're a bit heavy on the heat gun and they prefer to wrap with heat and stretch and you prefer to do what I do, which is the pre-tension and not use heat as much, you're not going to get the same result because their template was put on in a different way. Yeah. Yes, I mean, maybe you can. I, I think three-dimensional shapes. There's plenty of wireframes and two-dimensional template sites and therefore setting up artwork. They're only good as a guide. I never use those as accurate measurements. I find um, they're just never as close as you need them to be. Most templates are like that though, right? Even if you're getting into paint protection or tint, there's always, I mean, that's the point yeah. of them. They're convenience. Um, convenience. There's always a bit of give though, but nothing beats uh, the installer doing it themselves. Yeah. That's right. Even when like Expel for paint protection have some of the best templates in the world, even them, I've done a lot of PPF and you've really got to get inside the head of the person that made that template and 
you start to learn, all right, this is where they would have stretched it. You've got to imagine you're wrapping it like they wrapped it. Otherwise, it will just not quite go. Sorry, and uh, Shane's asked, rather than scanning, can you use a camera and tripod and photograph it on a vertical wall? You can, but it's never as accurate. So, yep. the, yes, we used to do that. So on some, actually on the, um, if, you, if you remember that photo I just flashed up of the, the Lincoln Continental, that was done with photos. So we didn't scan that in. That was just for a trade show. So, but we still got it very accurate. Uh, but the only recommendation there is go back as far as you can, like literally stand it as far away. I'm talking, we had one template, the whole side of a car on the back wall of our factory. And we literally went out onto the street and set up the tripod with the camera and had it zoomed in. So use your digital zoom on your camera to compensate for the distance. You'll get less distortion that way. The closer you are, obviously the, from the lens to the edges of the car has to travel a different distance than it does to the center. So you'll get a distortion. I have heard people using, there's a lens distortion correction tool in, in Lightroom, I believe. I haven't explored that myself, but I think that there are ways you can offset that distortion. Uh, if, you, if you have a zero distortion lens, you can, great. So that will, that will then correct that problem. So by all means, um, if that works for you, 100% try that. We, we found when things had to be like spot on, we would do it, uh, we would scan it. But by all means, if you, can, uh, if you can do it with a camera, you'll save a bunch of time. Right. We luckily had other people, we could, we could cut the scans up and give it to someone else to, to load through the scanner. So if you've got enough staff members, you can sort of off, offload that work, but it hey, is time um, consuming. Uh, anonymous attendee, uh, look mate, do you have any tips for, for helpful, uh, any helpful tips when wrapping by yourself? Like I think we might cover that at the end if that's all right, and we'll just do a bit of a Q&A and any-, any Sure, like use that. SLX if you want to wrap by yourself. Yeah, so we could cover off that kind of stuff then if that's, that's cool, mate. Uh, cool. James has asked, if you need a template, if you need a template to panel with a stretch, do you need to heat the template to relax the vinyl back? Yes, good panel? question. Yeah, great, great question. question. Yes, so that's the part that I didn't say. So obviously on something like that one, you don't really need to because I didn't stretch it putting it on. Yeah, and I recommend watching, whoever asked that question, watch the video on how we wrap the beetle. Um, Actually, I hope that made the clip. We, we wrapped the, the roof of the beetle, which if you guys have ever had to do one, or it goes from right at the, over the back window, over the roof, down the A pillars, and still joins up again around the windscreen wipers. So that's one solid piece. We didn't have any joins there. That was a nightmare uh, to wrap in the first place with the template. Then we had to rip that whole thing off. We laid it, we tried to heat it back. Yes, so you have to return it to its original shape to scan it in because it's got to start with a, as a flat panel. This is why 3D scanning just doesn't work for wrapping. People say, well, this 3D scanners now, just scan the shape of the car. But that scans the final shape of the car. What you need is the, the shape before all the stretch, um, because that's what creates the vinyl to hug, you know, lets the vinyl hug the film. If you make it already the shape of the panel, by the time you stretch it, you've gone way too far. So, Yes, you have to heat it back. Heat guns are very isolated. We tried it with, a, with an infrared heater. The panel was like meters, meter and a half, you know, half wide by three or four meters long. In the end, we laid it down, face down on the ground on backing paper and blasted it with steamers. We found that that gave a more even heat and that left a bit of hot water on there as well. So the, the whole glue side was covered in water, uh, but we eventually steamed it, got it all flat and then hung it up to dry waited for the water to dry off, then we laid it onto our butcher's paper and cut it all up. But that was hard. That was probably the hardest single panel on a car I've ever done. Um, but for you average stuff, yeah, I recommend laying it face down on, on a bench so that the glue's not gonna grab and prevent it from stretching back. I often lay it face down back on the silicon side of the backing paper, heat it, you'll see it, sh you'll see it shrink back. I tend to go high, high heat, low fan if you can. If, you, if the heat's on blowing too much air, you'll often see it'll soften the vinyl and flick it and blow it and it'll fold on itself and you can end up with a big mess of film and a wasted template. So try and use gen gentle airflow when you're heating it. 
Um, so that's sort of templating. Another thing I just wanted to quickly show you with the templates, um, this, actually, hang on. Have you got it for a sec, Steve, while I just pull up a photo? Go for it. Gonna see if I can find this. I've got a photo, so I'm working on a, um, on a bit of a, a templated distortion sort of technique. Uh, I don't know where the file is now. Yeah, don't don't share your uh, folders, mate. Nah, I'm not sharing now, am I? Nah, you're good. No, nah, that's good. So there's a cool. I've been I've been mucking around with projecting uh, images onto surfaces and then tracing them, and hopefully, then so you project onto a onto an image, trace that, and then scan that in, and you can end up getting a really cool so this uh, thing here a good question is yeah we've, we've had in the chat a few things around templating with transfer paper i mean do you see that as a viable option viable, viable solution yes I mean, you can looks right but yeah yeah you can so you can template with anything yes if it's a flat panel i would i would actually skip the wrap film so if it's a flat panel or a two-dimensional curve or a one-way curve you can use pretty much anything you want um, even paper, if you can get it to, to stay on with masking tape. But yeah, app tape, um, low tech app tape works great as long as it doesn't then roll up on itself when you take it off. Um, it's only, yeah, you only need to use proper wrap film when you're doing your complex curves, your three dimensional curves. Um, I'm just going to quickly share with you this image here. Now, this is just a pattern that you can, I just made this quickly, but you can see this here, um, I've projected that. So I haven't finished this yet, but this is showing about templating. I projected that onto this guard and put some vinyl down and I traced, I wonder if you're gonna be able to see this. It's not showing up, is it? It's a bit hard to see. Oh, you can see all those, all these dots here and lines. Yep. There you go. So that is my markings, my tracings of the shape when it's projected and it's completely stretched out like it's completely distorted but then once you if you oh, it's not going to show up is it if you hold this on a complete angle no it's just not going to show up okay that didn't work it's, it's too too much light in here basically I've, I've templated it or i've traced it on the angle and so it's going to look completely weird when it goes on here. But when you go and stand in the exact same spot that the projector was projecting, it all comes back into a perfect image. It's kind of like how you see those street artists that, paint, uh, that you know, draw on the sidewalk and oh, sidewalk. I've been in America for too long. Draw on the footpath um, like it looks like there's a hole in the ground or some trick of perspective. But then you go stand on the other side and it's completely distorted and it doesn't even look like anything. That's the basic principle of that. So. Templating can have heaps of different cool uses, um, but definitely handles. That's the main like time-saving thing that I recommend people do. Pre-cut your handles. You can even do the opposite. You can pre-template the, the door cup if, if it needs to, you know, people do that a lot with PPF, put that in the door cup. If you want to patch it first, do it once, scan it in. Even if you don't use that file straight away, I highly recommend scanning it and then you've got it on file. And then when you've got some downtime, then what, what's the perfect thing to do if you've, you've got a quiet day? Go through and trace, vectorize all those scans that you've done that you didn't have time to trace at the time. So you may not have time on the day to do that job, but if you've got time later, then you're never going to do it again. I, I templated, you know, the hinges on Jeep Wranglers. I tr traced one of them, templated it, scanned it all in and just did it because I, I, they were so annoying. And then just out of pure coincidence, we had a fleet for a Priceline pharmacy over here and we got like 50 Jeep Wranglers to do. And I can tell you those hinges, the time that I spent paid for itself a hundredfold because we just cut them, we plotted them 
And so they came in about five different bits. I had, it, it had little joins, but they were just hidden. You couldn't see them. Um, circles cut to cover the, cover the screw points. Um, saved us a lot of time. Uh, so templating can be really financially a good idea. Great. Hey, uh, I'm just mindful of the time and we're sure. knocking on uh, an hour and a half now, which okay. is flown by. So what I thought is um, we'll kind of start opening it up to the floor then. And, yeah. and guys, I know this is, you know, it's, it's hard because we're online and there's chat and whatever, but you can, um, you're welcome to message through questions and chat or if you yeah. click raise, I think a thing that might be called raise my hand or raise your hand. Um, then we can actually unmute you if you've got a mic or something and you just want to speak to Callum, it makes, makes it a bit easier. But I thought, why are people thinking of their, uh, their, their, their next question? Can you, you know, look, just imagine, mate, you've walked into a shop, uh, it's, it's a one man, one girl band uh, rapper, and you want to show them that one tip, that one thing that's going to save them some time, um, you know, say we're going into next week, what would be the first thing that you'd be, you'd be showing? And yes, for argument's sake, they use SLX then, you know. <laughs> To save save them some time. Um, that's a really good question. I I so I've got a I, I find with time saving tips I, I prefer to um, I prefer to not to sort of angle it as time saving from the get go. I you know I know a lot of Justin Pate's stuff is about how to save time on wraps and how to um, make everything more efficient, and that's that's great. And I, I love his tips and all the stuff he does. I'm sort of, I come at it from a slightly different angle where I prefer to, I try to teach people all the cool stuff that they can do and show them how to do it as if it was a high end color change. And yeah, those tips actually can add time to your average job. And I don't expect that you do like those pre stretched corners on every job, but I find that once you have those skills and once you know how to do it to the, to a higher standard, you then have the control as to when to dial that back. So rather than, I don't like to teach people time-saving skills before I've taught them the, the higher end tricks because I don't, I don't think that people should necessarily cut corners. Um, I think they should come with time. I, I think you get your skills up first and then speed comes later. Um, that's sort of, that's my angle. But, to answer your question, I, I would talk. I would tell people to pre-tension. So, exactly what I was doing at the start. Um, spend again. It's adding time, or it seems like it's adding time at the very start. Spend an extra couple of minutes if you if you're putting a bonnet on, on your own. Um, you know, apply it on the corner, one of the corners, as an anchor point, and really put down a good square of you know 200, 300 square mil to get it anchored on and then pull on the other side, tension it, go to the other corner, pull on that, tension it. It'll feel like you're spending a minute or two not wrapping, but you pre-tension that bonnet and you, it will save you five, 10, maybe 15 minutes. Um, and just, you, some people call it cold stretch. I know Justin Pate calls that cold stretch. I don't like to use the word stretch. I don't think, I, I kind of prefer to differentiate stretches, you know, when you're really making it grow. I call it, I call it consider that pre-tensioning just to differentiate it, but that's probably my number one tip. That's the biggest thing about my technique that changed when I started moving to using SLX because you just can't do that with 3M, unfortunately. You can't, it's not as forgiving and, and usable. Hey, we're getting um, uh, a bunch of questions come through, yeah. so I'll, I'll start taking some of these off. So, uh, Anonymous has said, more for computer letter, how does this product price compare to 180MC printable white, and how does the LAM? So, look, um, SLX is, is roughly around 25% cheaper uh, than, than 3M at, at computer letter. So, um, so well, why, why I'm mentioning it now, so we've got a deal for today, which the 1370 kit is, we can do the, from now to the end of next week uh, at... 1350 bucks for a 45 meter so it's um which is yeah pretty pretty bloody good price so That's if anyone wants to take me up on that um you can flick me an email or a message or we'll we'll send out the deal to everyone via email and, and that's a money back guarantee. So if you're not happy with it or if there's any problems or anything like that look we'll just take it off your hands no questions asked um so i hope that answers that uh chris manning has um said deep negative channels around window blanks or vans for trucks. He's also requested to talk though. So what I'll do, Chris, is I'll actually allow you to talk now because you may want to elaborate more on that. So uh, see if this works. Hey, Chris. 
Hi, how are you? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Oh, good. Um, we get uh, trucks where they haven't put window actual glass in, but they have just put a, a blank piece of, there's just a pressed metal shape that goes in and out two or three times. Yep. We had a truck we did recently, and uh, no matter what we did, it just kept on. We would get it down, post heat it, and uh, leave it overnight. The next morning, there'd be bubbles down the side, and it just, it was a nightmare, actually, to be honest with you. When you say bubbles, you mean like it had popped? Yeah, popped it back popped. Out. Yep. Yeah, look, that, that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in... I know there's a big, it's a big thing of pride for people to get things in one piece. Um, you know, people are doing antennas on, on the roofs of cars in one piece. It's, that's cool. And doing eye loads in one piece. I, I think a well-hidden join is the best thing that you can do on, on tricky recesses like that. Though that eye load that I showed in the photo, that was one piece, but that was wrapped inside and out. So we started in the middle and worked every recess in. Okay. Um, when you've got those multiple recesses, each one that you wrap into, the next one has even less film. Yeah. So yeah. You, you take the first one might go in all right, the next one's got 30% less film to, to yeah. borrow from. I am a big fan of hiding joins on, on highlights. So, um, this panel, unfortunately, isn't great for demoing it, but um, I will use a trick where I'll get my chinograph and I'll, I'll do this on a recess, um, sharpen it so you've got a really nice long um, part of your pencil. And then, I don't know which, which panel, which one are you seeing at the moment? Um, I'll sort of <coughs> run it on the highlight. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep. Um, so I'll run the flat edge and that will... Uh, show up that edge. Now yeah. that basically I do to, to tell me where to put my knifeless tape. So you can, if you've got steady hand and good eyesight, you can run your knifeless tape on a highlight without marking it. I do this because obviously once it gets close, the green tape makes it hard to see the reflection. And this just shows you, it telegraphs where to, where to put the knifeless. Yeah. If you hide your join, your underside on that edge and your overlap just over the, the curve, you almost never see it. So well hidden joins, you know, you stand a meter back, it hides it with the reflection, with the highlight, it catches a bit of light, you wouldn't know that there's a join there. And, you know, yeah, you might have to do it in two pieces. If it's a print, it gets tricky because if you've got lines, I just tell people, this is where you wanna be and have a good connection with your designer or if you are the designer yourself, don't put crazy stuff across deep recesses because it just obviously it makes life really hard. Yeah. <laughs> you might not have that option. The client may just insist on having some crazy logo smacked right on the side of their van. That's tricky, but I would always release for those deep recesses. I think yeah. people that go, oh, I don't want to join. Well, that's fair, but you, what you're asking the vinyl to do is you're taking it to its absolute limits when you're stretching it in like that. Yeah. Um, I'd rather release it, no tension, they, yeah, they've got a join, but they've got a wrap that's not going to pop and they get a better finish, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, we've, we've gotten to the stage now where we, um, we tailor the uh, job and the client's expectations so that they know before we start what's, yep. what, what it's going to do, yep. what it's not going to do. We've been I'd have that chat at the start and say, if you want it one piece, this is the price. If you're happy to yep. have joins and mm -hmm. just load the other price up to scare them yeah. away and then <laughs> and make the one with the join that's still they're still profitable you'll knock an yeah. hour or more off each side of the van and you'll make a higher margin on the job yeah and in that instance you can even drop down like if you're patching recesses or releasing recesses you can use our fusion wrap because it is a high performance polymeric but obviously it's not rated for deep channels but if you're releasing and relaxing film into deep channels and then using another piece you can you can wrap and fusion is uh, even better value again. Okay. So if you can tailor your job to avoid deep channels or to work around deep channels using releases and patches, uh, you can really start having some profitable um, wraps. Yep. All right. Um, so good luck. But multiple Thanks. recesses are always tricky, man. There's no doesn't get. Yeah. yeah. It's not no no easy solution to that. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thanks. 
Um, we've got, uh, so Steve's asked, what are three handy tools you always have in your toolbox? Three handy tools. Um, so I've always got, I mean, this is the basics. I've always got a, a pencil, knife and squeegee. The, the extra things I have are the, I like, so we, we use this wrap stick. You guys, you know, the equivalent of this is the Avery Flex. I can't remember what it's called. The blue and red tools, we just used to call them, which have the same sort of point. I, I use two of these uh, for tucking, you know, in under door trims and stuff. You hook, hook one in, or you can use one and a squeegee. You hook one in and then you sort of use a squeegee as you run along and it sort of lifts the rubber and tucks it at the same time. Um, I've got my, these are my favorite tape measures, these little baby fat maxes. Um, Tradies don't like them, they think they're uh, not real tape measures, but they're, they're only two meters. They're nice and soft, so they don't, you know, they don't kink or bend or, and they don't have those big jagged edges that some tape measures have where you're worried about hooking them onto panels. Um, and knifeless tape, I use a lot of that. Um, that that's product is probably, I, I think it's hands down one of the, the best uh, things to ever come into the market uh, for what it allows you to do. Um, that and yeah, apart from the basic, oh, and, and a wrap glove. Um, shout out to wrap glove as well, who make our um, glove. Not everyone likes wearing these, but um, I find I, I use a wrap glove, even if I haven't needed it on the job, I'll put one on to post heat. And it just allows you to, to push down every edge uh, and, and you know, don't have that risk of, of you grabbing the friction, grabbing the edge and increasing it or folding it. Just we can't buy it. those Arlon gloves as well before I get asked. I, I've already- Sorry, got yeah. <laughs> They're custom made for, uh, for, for Arlon. Yes, that's um, right. Sorry, that was just a-, a, a ish, Yeah, that's plug plug there. Hey, um, uh, as, and Shane asked if we, set, if we, if we can buy those um, sticks, whatever you were showing just before. Oh, yeah. Um, Cohen, if you could link our equivalent, I have a feeling we have something, but then I did literally just get a text from Cherie, thanks Cherie, Cherie who's in here, um, that we might not have them. So Shane, I'll, I'll have a look into that though and see what the equivalent is or what we can get. Yeah, so if, if you can't get onto these, so we're, we're in the... Uh, so we still don't have great access to this stuff, in, even in Australia at the moment, but we are, one of our distributors here is working on a connection with Yellow Tools. They're, it's a German product, so it is limited uh, with its distribution, but hopefully we're going to see it more and more coming over this way. The alternative to this, without me pushing you towards Avery products, is their, uh, the blue and red Avery tools. I think, I think they're called Flex Sticks, I'm not sure. Okay. If you do use them, which I used to use for years, I highly recommend. They've got really sharp points on either side. I used to pretty much get one straight away and just dock the point with my knife, cut the point off, and then I'd sand it and round it to get it sort of looking like that. Um, the points can, can tear the vinyl, can grab into the vinyl very quickly, but they're cool because they've got a, they've basically combined this tool with this tool. So it's got the flat edge on the other side, which is really handy for tucking right in those corners. And that as well, I round off. It comes sharp, and I haven't actually rounded this one, but I will. Those corners will dig in. If you push that into the corner of a headlight, they're gonna dig in. All you have gotta do is just round it to a couple of mil radius, will prevent, turns it more into a curved applicator and uh, reduces the chance that you're gonna damage your vinyl. Great, okay. So they're really good tools. I, th those, th those are something, yeah. These or the um, Avery ones, keep them in your tool toolkit. Yeah, well, maybe we, maybe we hit up Decker Strip or Total for, for a few. Um, Anonymous has asked, what are the limits with 4600 LX in terms of guard wraps? In terms of what, sorry? In, in terms of the guard wraps that, we, that you went over earlier. So I, I'm, guard wraps. they're meaning that, that flat side, you know, the guard's already in, you know, any, any tips and tricks when using a calendared film? So, uh, well, premium calendar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Yes, I, I find those, so 4600 is a great product. Um, I use calendar, I would happily use those high performance calendar products, that and Fusion Wrap on any, so the curves like you saw up top, that's a convex curve. Convex curves are always fine. It's the concave curves you've got to worry about. 
So that's convex can't pop because it's obviously held onto it, but concave, if it's in a dip, it can lift out of that dip. So 4,600, I would recommend getting as much pre-tension as you can. The more, uh, I don't know which if you can see the guard panel here, the more tension you can have left and right across a ridge like this, the better. So I know that the Ford Rangers, I've demoed on them a lot. They've got a really good shape to, to utilize this technique. They've got that real um, protruding sort of bulging flare. Same with, I think Ford Mustangs have a similar sort of um, flare to them. And if you just lay that relaxed and start applying, yeah, you're gonna get the flat part down fine. You're gonna start getting a lot of build up and a lot of wrinkles. You might be able to heat it out, but just make your life easier and just stretch it. Yeah, don't stretch it the same way as the curve. Stretch it perpendicular and go left and right. And that tension that goes that way takes out all that build up. Um, so setting up 4,600, definitely use on a guard provided it doesn't then have another point that goes in too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and guys, if, you, if you're not aware, the 4600 is the, um, the, the product below SLX. So not, not our flat five year, it's our warranted on vehicle. Um, I think it's seven year from memory. I might be wrong and gonna get the wrong, an email, but something like that anyway. It's, uh, it's, it's um, a, it's it's a multi-purpose film as well. Yeah. You can use yeah. that on a lot of different things. Yeah. That's a really versatile film. Uh, we've got a left, uh, left field question here. Just what, what would be your one top tip for applying PPF? So I know not quite, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, well, hey, it's been asked. We might as well. PPF, yeah. No, that's a good question. I've done a lot of PPF. Um, I don't enjoy it actually myself. Um, partly just because I did, I did it every day for six months and my hands were just destroyed. I was trying, I tried using gloves, being having your hands always wet for that long is, is not great for your skin. But my biggest tip is to keep the car wet and to wet the uh, film as well beforehand. So I would literally wash the car first. I'd use, use compressed air. If you have access to compressed air with, a, with just the blower nozzle, that's gonna change your life with, with PPF. So I would wash it and have the compressed air on hand and I'd be blasting water in under the seals and then using the air, really high pressure air to blow out, to follow, pushes water out, that takes out grit and dirt. Ideally you'll have trim off if you have that ability or that opportunity. If not, compressed air and a high pressure water jet to get in those cracks will save those. Everyone's had that moment where you go to put PPF on and a little bit of grit falls out from under the mirror or something or the door handles and it just ruins the whole piece. I would also pre-rinse my panels. So I would, if I had to do a bonnet, I would take it outside, which ideally, if you've got a wash bay inside, even better. And I would get two of us to hold it either side and I would hose down the front and the back of the PPF. Hopefully it's got a plastic synthetic backing. Um, because even a speck of dust on the backing paper or a speck of dust on the face of the PPF, you all know when you're peeling the backing, hopefully you're wetting the, the, the glue as soon as the back comes off. I, I don't like peeling the whole backing off, then spraying it because the, the static electricity can pull dust from the other side. I've literally seen specs do a, three, do a 360 from the other side. They get pulled onto the glue side and then it's kind of game over. Right. The, the wetter everything is, the less static, the less chance there is for dust to move. Um, if you could do it in a wash bay, I, my, I've, I've often thought my ideal PPF room would be, a, would be a vacuum filtered room. So always have negative pressure and it would just have a misting jet on at all times. And you'd pretty much have to wear a, a waterproof hazmat suit, but it would be, you could just wash, nothing would ever re-enter the room. It would just be like a sterile environment. That's not practical, but uh, that's that's the dream. I'd probably enjoy doing PPF if I, if I could do it. Yeah. That way. Hey, and uh, Jake's asked. He goes, "I've worked on a few old skylines, and the roof, rear quarter panel, and pillars are all connected. What's the best way to do a panel like this in one piece, or have the least amount of seams?" Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that does get tricky. I can't off the top of my. I mean, I used to do a few old skylines, but I can't quite picture the exact shape of them right off the top of my head. But. Um, that's really hard. You've either got to, 
if it's, I mean, we don't, Arlon don't make a color change film anymore. So I, but I did have done a lot of color, color changes in my time. So I have to sort of change my answers now because if you, color change quality is, is often a lot different to uh, fleet quality or commercial. So I sort of have, now my answers are tailored more to the commercial side where generally it's okay to, to use a join or a release. But even still, you might have a high-end uh, commercial wrap that it's a print, but they still want it to look color change quality. You'd, you'd be really mucking around with a lot of scrap vinyl on those hard corners um, to see. So often I'll take a piece of scrap and wrap the hardest part and see if those lines continue the way they want to fall. Is that going to be wider than my film? Is it going to be wider than 15, 20? And if it's just close, you might think, all right, I can stretch that, I can grow that. If it's way out, I wouldn't risk. You know, the, the Lincoln, the Continental, we tried to do the roof and the pillars in one go, and it ended up, it would have needed a piece 17, 1800 wide. So in the end, we did hidden joins. Um, one way you can do that is you can do the pillars and the, the sides in one piece, put a hidden join along the roof of the bonnet. When I say hidden join, do a butt join. So that there's two pieces side by side. Now you don't leave it like that. You then put another piece over top of the bonnet, but with an extra 20 mil. So that piece covers the butt join, but means that there's no vinyl underneath. So I can actually, I don't know if we have time for me to do a real quick demo on yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. Yep. So I'll get my knifeless tape. To say if I've got this piece, I'll get a slightly bigger piece. And thanks again for everyone that's uh, that's joined and 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 for bearing with us of kind of working through a bunch of different questions and you know we we'd normally do trainings like this with kind of eight nine ten companies we we started off with um, close to ninety of you so it's um you know he's you know Callum mate you've done a great job of of kind of working with everyone and and yeah so many things to cover right I mean you could be here all day if you wanted to exactly yeah. Now I'm going to try and zoom, why isn't this letting me zoom in? I don't know if you guys can see that all right. So say if this is the first piece, pull your knifeless, we're not keeping this part. Then you get your next print. So this line here, if I, if I had the right shape panel, I could show you. This line here, I can, I can actually use this, but it could be any other piece. You then get your next piece and you either butt it to it or the technique I use a lot is to lay another piece of knifeless tape with the filament, with the line, right on the edge. So half the green's on the, the panel that you're doing. I'm just gonna see if I can zoom this. Why is it not letting me zoom? That's weird. Anyway, all right. So the, the string of the, of the knifeless is right on that edge. Put your next piece over. Hopefully you've got all your prints to line up. Pull that piece. Now you have two pieces but joined together, but you would never leave it like that because technically there's a sliver there where it's missed. Then you get your, so this would be the side of the skyline, the, the pillar, you could get the whole pillar in the, the back quarter, I'm pretty sure, but the, this would be the roof. So this would be hidden up on the top. And then you have to, you, you have to wrap something twice if you do this technique. So then when you do your next piece, you bring it over, it covers the butt join by 10, whatever you want, five, 10 mil. And you can't see the underside join. And that's the most visible one. So I'll bring this light over. So I call it the underlap. So that piece has got the hidden butt join. But if I was to show you, what it looks like when you don't do the hidden butt join and you just do two layers of vinyl, you see how drastically you can see that line there? So that line is the underlap. That's what often is the most visible. There's, that doesn't exist on this one because it's, there is no underlap. That layer is level. 
So that's like a hidden join. So if, then if you hide this part on another swage line, that's when you get really hard to see joins. Does that make sense to everyone? Do another one quickly on here. Steve, just stop me if, it, if you need me to move on, but. No, mate, that's all good, clear as mud. So this, I'll just, I'll hide this. This is not a sharp enough swage, really, to hide a join. It's pretty, pretty gentle, but it will do for this demo. So I'm gonna put this piece over here. Cut this one. Now you have to determine whether it's worth doing this because the piece that gets done with the under patch has to be wrapped over. So you need to, if you put the patch this low, you need to commit to wrapping the top of the guard twice. So you've got to be kind of cautious about where you want to use this technique. Um, but I do it a lot for patches in and around headlights because you can put the patch in, but join it, and then you put an over patch that hides the join and that's, they're only ever the size of well, the, the headlight recess or whatever. So it's not too much, not too much um, extra vinyl at all. And if you scan those in ahead of time, that's when you really sort of start saving time. So now I've done the join, the hidden butt join. Now I'm gonna use another piece of knifeless just under that swage line. So enough that the vinyl covers it, but not by much. And again, if you're print lined up, that's when you really start to camouflage the join because you're gonna see this because you're gonna know where the, the print doesn't line up. But I used to be able to zoom on this and now it's not letting me. <laughs> Technical issues. Yeah, I don't know why that is. So I'll just bring this right in. So. You can sort of see, yeah, you can, there's a color change there, but there's not a dirty, great, big underlap join. So if I was to do the same thing without that patch, this is what it would look like. Hopefully that's focusing enough. Yeah, no, no, we, get, we see it. There's a really big line there. Yeah. So that underlap is the most visible one every time. So that's where, so going back to, I think it was Chris's question on the, um, on recesses, you know, this isn't, a, this isn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest doing the double patch technique on a recess necessarily, because you're going to be wrapping the whole side of the van a couple of times. But if you can hide it on a swage line, at least it's better. People might see that line, but it, follows the body of the car. So it's kind of, it looks intentional, if you know what I mean. It's better than having just a random straight join. So high lux, uh, sorry, high aces, we used to do in two parts. And we used to do a, a join right through that low swage line, that, that sort of channel that runs below the sliding door. So a lot of people will try to hide it just where the pillar gets narrow and they'll just put a little join across there, but it stands out like anything. So we would join the entire length of a high ace um, along that hidden, that swage line that's sort of down low. And you just wouldn't see it because it would be in a shadow. Um, and it saved a lot of time on installs as well. Right. So yeah, I hope that um, that's sort of, yeah, that, that hidden join is one of, one of my favorite tricks that I use. It's, it's not, that isn't necessarily a time saving thing because it is an added step, but if you template your patch first, it can be pretty quick and it gives just such a better finish. Great. Yeah. Well, That's look, awesome. we're, we're knocking on the two hour mark now. So I, oh, think, wow. um, I think we better wrap it up and let everyone get back to their, <laughs> their day. Yeah. So sure you've got some stuff to do too. So oh, this um, has I, been great. I've loved it. This is, yeah, this is it's a been awesome. Thank day. you very much for, for and, uh, and so good we could put this together and you know, late notice. It was just a chat that we had only a couple of days ago and then, yeah. Boom, away we go. So, I mean, and that's what it's all about, right? It's nice and easy, and, and this is such a cool way to do it. I mean, get to reach 80, 90 companies uh, in one hit. It's just, it's awesome. So, 
Um, guys, if you've got anything that you'd like to see again, I mean, we can do this again. And if, if we want to drill into more specifics on certain areas and things like that, we can. Yeah. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, there, obviously there's so much, so much to cover. So, yeah, look, um, this will is actually being recorded and, and will be saved and we're going to upload it to our website this afternoon. So you can, and it'll just be through YouTube, so you can send it to anyone in the company or, or friends and, you know, tell them about certain parts of it. But yeah, look, we'll, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. And um, thanks again, everyone. Mate, Callum, thank you again for your time, dude. It was awesome. Can I just, can I just do a yeah. selfish pitch here? Um, yeah. If you want to follow me on Instagram, cal.arlon. Not much content yet, but it's building. Also, along with Steve's offer for, for the kit comes my support as well. So email me at cjames at arlon.com. If you are just starting out with the product, you want to, you want to jump in and, and, and uh, try it out, I'm here as much as, as, for, with as much support as I can give you from across the Tasman. But even if it's talking through how to prep it, what, you know, anything comes up that caught you off guard, give me, send me an email um, and I'll, I'll get in touch and, and offer whatever support I can. So I'm, I am here for you guys. Even though I'm in Melbourne, I'm here for New Zealand as well. So... Yeah, and we'll get you out as soon as we can and, um, and do a couple more live demos. And yeah, like yeah. I said, I'd love to do this again. And, uh, and then we'll Me get um, everyone's feedback over the next few days and, and we'll look at planning something, um, you know, particular areas and that kind of going forward. Yeah. All right. Well, happy Friday, everyone. And for the Kiwis, we're Tuesday. We're back into it. Hopefully everyone stays safe for the rest of the weekend. And uh, I can't wait to get back into it on Tuesday and start selling some goddamn vinyl. So, uh, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, computer. Yeah.